location. A lot of people raising eyebrows about hosting the Taliban at Camp David. Alex. All right, Mike Vicar at the White House. Thank you, Mike, for that. Let's discuss all this with Congressman Ted Liu, a Democrat from California, member of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. He is also an Air Force veteran. Nice to see you, Congressman. Thank you for joining me. What about this is most concerning to you, that the administration called off the negotiations with the Taliban, that they did so supposedly when the talks were going so well, that it was announced on Twitter, uh, the fact that there was a secret meeting set for Camp David with the Taliban and the Afghan president, all these issues that Mike Vicara just brought up. What is most concerning to you? Uh, thank you, Alex, for that question. It is unseemly for the president to invite the Taliban to Camp David during the week of 9-11. However, we do need to negotiate with the Taliban. We've been in Afghanistan for 18 years. We have to withdraw. I don't see why we need to continue risking soldiers' lives. And lots of money for a area where we've been in for a long time and have not won. But what's most concerning is that this president cannot achieve a deal because nobody trusts him. He can't get a deal with China, can't get a deal with North Korea. Now he can't get a deal with the Taliban. That is what is most concerning to me. Here's something from Secretary of State uh, Mike Pompeo, who says this about whether a break in these negotiations means it would now take longer to withdraw troops from Afghanistan. Let's take a listen to that. Timetables are, are, are difficult things to know. I hope not. I, I hope we can begin inter Afghan negotiations. I hope we can reduce the levels of violence. I hope the Taliban will uh, continue to move towards their commitment to break with Al Qaeda. Where do you stand, Congressman, on withdrawing troops from Afghanistan? Should some of these 14,000 forces, should they, some at least, at least, remain in Afghanistan, even if a peace deal is reached? And if so, in what capacity? Uh, Donald Trump campaigned on getting the United States out of endless wars. He has failed. There are more troops in Afghanistan now than when he first took office. I believe we should withdraw from Afghanistan. We have soldiers there who are toddlers uh, at the time we started the Afghan war. If we can't win this after 18 years, there's no indication we're going to win this after another 18 years. We need to withdraw our troops. We need to focus on domestic priorities, health care, infrastructure, getting rid of corruption in the White House, that's what we should be focused on. Do we have a full accounting of what these troops are actually doing in Afghanistan? Uh, that is a great question. So one of the issues that I've had on the Foreign Affairs Committee, not just on Afghanistan, but really a lot of different hotspots around the world, is we don't know what the administration's strategy is. And even now, we don't actually know what is the administration trying to achieve in Afghanistan, what is their desired end state, and how do our troops help get us there. And so the president has to come before the American people and explain what the heck we're still doing there. As, as you know, uh, when it comes to uh, reaching a peace deal, it's difficult. But it can be even more difficult in ensuring that whatever deal is reached is put into effect. What are the challenges of that? So one of the problems when you have a president that lies all the time is it's not just Americans that no longer trust him, it's also people around the world. So again, he has not been able to negotiate any deals uh, with North Korea, with China, now with the Taliban. Our allies uh, no longer trust this president, and that makes it very difficult for this administration to operate. I actually think he pulled the plug uh, on this a secret meeting because he believed nothing was going to be achieved. The Taliban has been doing all sorts of attacks uh, in Afghanistan. Not sure why you have to pick this one attack over other attacks to all of a sudden pull a plug on this meeting. Back with me, Congressman Ted Lieu. Look, when it comes to the weather, do we have to put this in perspective of an election? I mean, doesn't it matter to people finding out if there's dangerous weather heading their way, finding out an accurate assessment of what's coming their way so they can prepare? Uh, that's a great point. What actually caused uh, the weather forecasters in Birmingham, Alabama to contradict the president is they started getting all these calls from people in Alabama who were sort of freaked out that a hurricane was going to strike them when they knew at that time Hurricane Dorian was nowhere going to go near Alabama. And I think people who stand up to the president and the weather service should be promoted. Uh, they should not be criticized because we need to have the truth. We need to have accurate weather forecasts. We do not need people here trying to cover up for the president when he simply made a mistake and saying the hurricane was going to go near Alabama. In your recollection, has there ever been a dispute like this with the National Weather Service and the White House? 
Uh, what is very troubling about the behavior of the president is that he is taking a lot of normally good people in the federal government and making them do bad things, like covering up for uh, his mistakes and for his errors. And I just wish that more federal employees would understand that they took one oath. It was through the Constitution. It was not to Donald Trump. I do hope that the leadership of NOAA gets a spine and stands up to the president and puts science over sycophancy. I mentioned earlier you are an Air Force veteran. What do you make of the Air Force confirming and defending, really, a layover at the president's Scottish resort? Do you believe the military is cooperating with the president to make money for his Scottish resort? Are they trying to curry favor with him? Or do you see this layover as not being unusual as the Air Force claims? Uh, when you look at the public reporting, Presswick is a defense contractor. They make money uh, from this refueling. And we also know from the public reporting that they got the Trump resort to not only give reduced rates to the military, but also give them free rounds of golf. I serve an active duty as a JAG. I know that these federal gift rules can be complicated. But one thing is very clear. You cannot accept any gift from a prohibited source. And one of the examples of a prohibited source is a defense contractor. I think there are all sorts of ethical issues with what the military is doing. And I do believe uh, that they're trying to prop up uh, both Trump's resort as well as giving a defense contractor a lot of money in exchange for these kinds of gifts that the military is giving. Mm. I want to also ask you about Stormy Daniels. As you and your colleagues in the Judiciary Committee, they're planning to hold hearings about the president's role in alleged hush money payments. Daniels says she's ready to testify. Will your committee ask her to testify? Uh, the witness list has not been finalized. Uh, we do know that Michael Cohen is sitting in federal prison partly because he engaged in a criminal conspiracy to use hush money payments to silence Stormy Daniels as well as Karen McDougal when they had negative stories about affairs with Donald Trump. We also know that Donald Trump wrote the checks for this criminal conspiracy along with uh, AMI, National Enquirer, and under any other American face with this evidence, that person would also be sitting next to Michael Cohen in prison. The reason Trump has not been indicted is because of a Department of Justice policy that says you can't indict a sitting president. So even though the witness list has not been put forth, would you like to see Stormy Daniels testify? I think we want to put together the best witnesses we can to provide the information and the facts and also provide a compelling narrative to American people. Because what we have here is a criminal conspiracy in direct violation of felony campaign finance laws. These campaign finance laws are one of the bedrocks of our democracy. Uh, we can't have a democracy if people lie and cheat their way to winning an election. California Congressman Ted Lieu, always good to talk with you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. We continue to follow